Christopher Robin, what exactly is doing nothing? Well, I'm told it means going along, listening to all the things you can't hear, and not bothering.
And let me get my my other battery. John Fire. What is up? The echo happening. What's up, man? It's been a minute. Yo, where are we all at Anime NYC? That's that's what I gotta say. John J4, where are we all at Anime NYC, yo? Get my music turned up. Wow, YouTube's being a slog right now. Yeah, the platform that I play my music on is being a trash. Oh, let's see there. Um, let's turn this down. Hey there, man. I know it sounds crazy, but I feel like I have a good idea for a manga and your art uh, is great. Would you like to do that at all? Um, at all? Like, I know it's a lot of work, so. Uh, I'm going to be real with you, uh, Gabriel. Or Gabriel. Uh, it's probably going to be a no, man. Um, simply because one of which I don't really like doing comic commissions for people um, because they take so long and you really have to really jive with that person. Like I would have to know a person for a while before I was going to do a comic thing with them. They're pretty expensive and, you know, like my time is limited. So if, like I do commission work, character designs are kind of the best thing for me right now. Um... And if I'm going to do comic stuff, I kind of want to do my own thing, man. So, you know, it's no offense to you or whatever. And I also feel like everybody feels like they have a really great idea. And, um, you know, I don't, sometimes those ideas aren't fully vetted, you know what I mean? And then people don't want to take advice on their ideas. So it's really hard to work on an idea. I don't know. It, it's I, I, I as of right now, I don't really feel comfortable doing a lot of um, comic book commission stuff, you know, for people. I don't think I've kind of gotten there mentally, and then with the time, you know, I'm I'm looking to a different money situation in the <laughs> next year. So I think I'm going to be um, getting a promotion essentially. So uh, when that happens, that's going to open up a lot more time for me to do a lot more of my own personal work and once I start making headway there I might jump into it I might feel like okay let me try it um but Joe I appreciate you saying you understand I appreciate you not taking offense to it um and you know it's cool it's cool it's cool that you asked I think it's good that you asked and if, if you have a really great idea um keep building on it you know it's it's a no today but it could be a yes tomorrow so I waved at somebody oh that was accidental but hey I'm glad you're here Okay, let's see, John, what's up? Legend has returned. I am not a legend. Uh, I'm chilling. I wanted to go to Anime NYC, but I couldn't. We were stuck in South Carolina. Oh, dog, come on. Oh, nostalgia called you out for cat, bro. Y'all was hanging out in New York, down the street from uh, <laughs> Mersey. What's good? I was telling John, where was he for Anime, anime NYC? That's my fill. I badly need a haircut. I badly need to get back into the gym. There's a lot of things I badly got to do. <clears throat> I gotta change my follower goal thing because it is not it right now. Let's just pop that off there. Because <sighs> I did meet that goal. It is also not September. Def calling you out, Mike Tony. Nice to see you in Discord. Yes. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm glad I joined uh, Cam's Discord. I don't know how active I'm gonna be, you know, but Cam's the homie, so. You know, I want to, I want to go there and, uh, and, uh, you know, show him some respect. Oh, lift the darkness, 10 spots. I got to do it. Well, before I start working on some stuff, I might as well do it. Get my squats in. 
Uh, I'll be needing a deck box, having King, uh, okay, probably February down. February I should be. Thanks for giving me enough, uh, enough headway too. So um, that way I can pencil me in for February. When do you think you'll have the first fully mapped story of comic book wise? I already have one mapped. I've already started working on the story boards. Those boards that I put up are the pages that I threw away. <laughs> the ones that I ended up getting over 10K likes, those are the ones I, I threw away. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's there, dog. It's just like comic book pages take a long time. All right, bet. Great. I got people, I got people play, I'm playing in chess right now. They're making their moves right now. Um, I like three games going on all, all the time. Um, yeah, so uh, to go back to the story stuff, I, the stories are ready. You know what I'm saying? A couple of them are like, I have, you know, endings of first volumes and stuff or first sets of chapters. It's literally just doing the time to do it. Like, and I really, I want to do it well, you know, uh, no, fuck that. Like I, everybody says they want to do it well. I want to do it. So it's, um, conceivable, like, like, like people can digest it. You know, there isn't a lot of breaks in, for example, like, I don't know, like the, 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 I don't want the backgrounds to be trash that it pulls you out. You know what I'm saying? I'm still really trying to develop like my background style for comics. Cause right now the way I draw backgrounds, it's not going to work. You know, my backgrounds take me hours and that's because I'm sitting there painting them. All right. So what I do, I got the curls, I got the push-ups, and I got the squats. Uh, I got to thank nostalgia event smoke for getting me in shape right now. That's the whole point of me putting that up there. Cause I've been neglecting the, my gym times and I got to get that shit back. Um, let me answer this question on IG and then I will uh, hit all those workouts. Uh, dang. Dang throw always. Yeah, they do. I try to end up doing a full page drawing rather than storyboards. Yeah, I. <laughs> oh, dang throwaways. Oh, well. Um, yeah, I just do. Well, the thing is, like, I'm vetting the pages in a way where I'm like, you know, after you go through your boards, and then you start making it, you know, like there, I was like, oh, let me fully develop this. Cause I went through the boards and I was like, all right, let me, let me kind of do this. Um, and, uh, once I started going through it, I was like, this is cool, but I need to, I need to come at this from a different angle. Um, you know, and there's certain things like blurring the, blurring the sketches. Like I really need to see what that's going to look like because, you know, what I've learned from doing, like I do have a, not a secret comic, but anybody who's been following me for a long time, I put a comic out there that has like 10 chapters or nine chapters. And the one thing I learned is like, you'll get into making something. And then because you didn't really vet it, you'll just be polishing a turd. You know what I'm saying? Like you just kind of working on the thing that doesn't fucking work. And it could just be something small, like, yo, blurring out that character really big could ruin that whole space. You know, and I won't know that until after I start drawing it and then I bullshit the drawing and just be like, all right, well, I'm going to blur him anyway. And then realize like, oh, you probably should really draw the giant and then blur out your character because that first scene you want, you want to recognize whatever, or do you want them to explore that space of the panel and stuff? So, you know, I, I, there's a lot of stuff that I try to think about. Um, and I'm trying not to compare my, my work to like indie projects, but like to, you know, established ones. And I know I'm going to fall short on the established projects. I'm, I'm going to eat that. Like, it's not a, it's not what I'm worried about. Um, if I got to fall short, then I want to at least get really close. You know what I mean? To, to, to being able to do that. All right. Give me one second. All right. So what's, I'm going to do them in order. We're going to do the squats. We're going to do the curls and then we're going to do the pushups because I don't want to move the camera back to do more shit. The pushups would be the last thing that I do. And my space is a, there's a little bit of a mess. Let's see. Let's see. I mean, where are my weights at? And can they see me on camera? 
So, and then I'll tell you guys about Anime NYC. My Anime NYC uh, uh, experience was, was fucking dope. In my feet are hurting. Probably better if I go this way. There's my carpets in the way now. I have a little carpet that's here. Um, yeah, the Anime NYC was dope. Man. I like, I love it every year. I'm excited um, to just be able to like meet people, fans, turn uh, my work on to new people. And uh, yeah, it's just, it's just a great experience, man. And I think this year with the book, one for good luck, I think. Um, with the book was great because a lot of people didn't know that I had the book. Um, What's the next thing in line? I gotta do the curls. was dope because it was like I didn't know how people were gonna receive the book and uh, back up. my camera's on this side Everybody that's on IG, my followers on uh, Twitch, have redeemed some channel points for me to work out. So that was my bicep curls, and now I have to do my push-ups. Let, let me answer any questions that are on here that have come up real quick. <sighs> All right, no questions. People just watching me suffer. Oh shit, Godfrey just hopped in. Dope. Trying to go live? Trying to go live, Godfrey? I got some stuff we could talk about, man. That would be dope. That would be really dope if I could go live with Godfrey. That'd be fire. All right, well, I got these push-ups I got to do, so. <sighs> Must feed the Twitch gods. <clears throat> but yo, Vin Smoke, John... Uh, J4, um, what happened to y'all at Anime NYC, man? Uh, how long is the pre-sale? The pre-sale is in, is until January. So, um, if you're trying to get the book, uh, I'm going to send it out by the end of January. And I think I need about 30 pre-sales, so I might be halfway there now. I cannot see what you guys are seeing on here. You guys are gonna see my floor, the mess of my floor. Let me do this. Go. My chair, my everything right there. All right, IG, hold on. I got these push-ups I have to do, and then I'll be back. I'll also tell you guys how crazy Anime NYC was in terms of, like, the amount of people that showed up. 
How many did I have to do? 25. 20. Make it a clean 25. Debt paid. All right. Now I'm back. GG's, yeah. All right. Um, let's fix my cam. Let's get into the workspace. You guys can see what I'm working on. And I got a little bit of water here. My, my throat is dry. <clears throat> All right, so. All right, I've been busy you know, getting my life together next year. Yo, this year though, I know I'm just fucking with you guys, um, but this year was a little crazy uh, because I think, what's up, Gray? Life's pretty good. If I'm breathing hard, it's just because my chat has me working out, doing push-ups, squats, curls, things I should be going to the gym and doing. Um, and uh, it was probably a it was probably good that you guys didn't actually show up this year because anime nyc didn't expect this many people to show up and they didn't know what to do um you know i had like friends and family outside on friday for like i don't know six hours or some shit like that or some of them for three hours some people were out there for six hours could not get in at all <laughs> and um and then once they got in apparently you know, and I couldn't tell because I'm at my table, but all the signage was garbage, right? So like people couldn't even, once they got to um, the artist alley, they couldn't even really find the sections. So there were people that were there that showed up, one got one day passes to come and just see me on Friday. And then they never got in. And then when they got in, they got in so late at like 6.30, mind you, it closed at seven that they couldn't even get to my table before they started being pushed out. And so day one for me, like sales wise, you know, wasn't the best. Um, and it's, you know, that's twofold. One of which, like when I go to cons, if you see my videos, I don't really do fan art. Like I don't have a lot of fan art. So, um, you know, people aren't necessarily going to Anime NYC to see what I'm doing. Like, they're not just pulling up and being like, yo, this shit is fire. Um, I came here for new shit. They're coming here to see like, their favorite anime is drawn by other artists. So I have to do a lot of selling in order to make sales. And, which is fine by me because I feel like, you know, you guys can correct me if I'm wrong. I feel like I have the ability to be able to speak about my projects and tell the stories about my projects, um, which I think helps me sell them to people. Uh, and make them more comfortable with buying it. But if there are no people coming in, that really affects my numbers, like greatly. So um, first day sales were not the best. They were not bad, but you know, the people next to me, they had to have been doing insane numbers. Like not day one, but like over the course of the con, if their shit was coming in and like they do more fan artsy things or, or the one, there was one girl that was next to me and uh named everest like super awesome her work and shit's dope and she also built like a really big audience online i think she has over like sixteen thousand um shipments on etsy and like some wild shit um <laughs> but uh she had to have been doing numbers while she was there and another lady next to me was selling like anime pillows and there was a lot of creepos coming over 
but she was doing crazy numbers too. So for me, I need high volume, high velocity uh, in order for me to like, you know, do a halfway decent job while I'm there essentially. Saturday was popping uh, because they got their shit in order. Obviously a lot more people can go to a Saturday, not a Friday because niggas have work. Um, but it, you know, again, people were still waiting outside one or two hours. They were like waiting in lines to get in lines. But you know, once they got in, people basically enjoyed it. You know, I think the artist alley just became like a second thought and I wish it was a little bit more on the forefront. Um, you know, especially after me not being able to go after the last year. Uh, and that year I heard was popping. So, you know, but all in all, like besides that drop ball of, of people actually like getting in, it was great. Like I met a, a bunch of people. I got a bunch of merch that I thought was really dope. Um, that people who just, you know, some people I had just met and we just vibed. So they were like, yo, here's my book. Um, check it out, blah, 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 blah. Um, and then some people, you know, who I either I have been fans with or they were fans of mine for a long time. Um, I linked up with the people who uh, do It's Nana Wear Spider. Um, that dude was cool. And their book is obviously dope. And I had seen them online for fucking years. So it was really cool to kind of connect with them. Um, yeah, they also, there weren't that many black creators uh, or like all black tables. So like, so you might get some like mixes where you'll get like, you know, one black person and maybe another person of color or maybe a white person, which wasn't bad. Um, but you know, one of the things that kind of like, I always think about is like, I get a lot of black people who basically call me racist or who will say, who don't necessarily like what I do because of how often I'm just drawing black people or whatever. So you never really know if like you're bumping into a Candace Owens type, you know what I mean? So, um, but I went around, you know, before my table was all set up, I rolled up to all the black tables. I got all their num like their, their table numbers. I wrote them down on the list. And then anybody who came to me looking for black artists, I was like, here, take a picture of this on my phone. So that way they can go and see the other black artists. And I, there was only like seven of us, you know, out of that whole list. Now seven, like, you know, all black content creators, there might've been like a couple more where like the tables were mixed. So, um, I really need to get my ass to one of these conventions. Uh, the Candace Owens triggers me. Yeah, I mean, there's some people that are like that. You know, I don't know. I it's 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 interesting. Like I've kind of found a way of not um, of not like, of not like uh, getting too frustrated with those people. But the simple fact of the matter is, is like, it's either willful ignorance or it's ignorance. And either way, like it's a sad thing. You know what I'm saying? Um, and the Candace Owens situation is more of like a willful ignorance, in my opinion. But, uh, you know, each his own, you know. But I look at that situation and I never really know, you know. I will say this about Anime NYC this year, too. The first year that I went... The first year that I went, I didn't have my book. But I just had all original characters. And obviously all of them were black. So, I could see people walk by... I could see them look at the work. I could see them kind of like it, but them kind of being like, is this an agenda? Is it like they just didn't fully know like how to receive it? And I think there's also this thing where like non-black people sometimes when they see black characters or black groups of created characters, they're not sure if it's like a thing that they can indulge in. You know what I'm saying? They're not sure if it's like a thing that they can like be a part of or, or like get you know what i mean not for sake of criticism but like are they gonna get it is it a black thing um so there were people who were like walking around my table like i probably made twice as much money this year than i did last year than, than the first year that i went but the organization was better the first year and i think the reason why i did better this year is after the pandemic but after a lot of like black lives matter movements and a lot of like cultural black movements in the media it made a really big difference in terms of like how people felt like they could receive the work 
So that first year, people were walking around my table like an ellipses. They were just trying to like move around um, and just kind of be like, I don't want no part of that. And, um, you know, I probably think I got maybe, you know, maybe two Asian people stopped at my table the first time, uh, like the first year that I was there. Um, but this year, like, there was almost like this no fear of kind of being like, well, not no fear. I won't, I won't say that. There are people who are like standing and looking from afar. And I had to like wave them over to be like, hey, like they were waiting in line somewhere. I'm like, hey, it's okay. Like you can look if you want and let them flip through. I'm like, while you're waiting in line, you can look. And then I would give them my whole like sales pitch in terms of like what I do as an artist so that they would feel comfortable. Um, but there were also just white and Asian people who felt comfortable pulling up who were just like, oh, what's this about? And I was like, oh, it's this, that, and the other thing. And it wasn't like negative, it wasn't whatever. Uh, it was really like people who felt interested and felt like they really wanted to kind of jump in and be a part of it. And, you know, and I, I ended up getting a, a lot of customers who were like, you know, one white dude came up, he really liked the work. Um, he's in my DMs, I have to DM him back too. Um, we talked a little bit about crypto, but uh, you know, he spent like a hundred bucks. Uh, he bought like a hundred dollars worth of shit. Um, like posters the book and everything and you know I think some people too when they were able to sit down and like talk to me and they were able to actually like like understand what I was making and why it ended up being a very very easy selling point you know what I'm saying uh, it also matters what they're looking for too it, it does you know but like I think one of the things is when they before when they used to see shit like that they felt like it was militant right like it, it just felt like it um you might be a little late sean uh it felt like it was you know a little militant like i don't know if i can get you know to join this or be a part of this thing because um you know maybe it might not be for me or it might just have some negativity toward it and um you know how i would kind of open up is people would come up They'd basically be like, you know, they'd be like, oh, what's this about? And some people might not even say what's this about. They'll be standing across the room doing some shit and they'll be like, and I'll just wave at them and then they'll feel obligated to come over or they'll just look over. And I'm like, it's OK, you can come over and look through. And then I'll just say, um, you know, so I love anime and I actually draw people of color in anime. That's my thing. Um, but I also I don't just want skin representation. I want cultural representation, uh, which is very important. So I pull from. The entirety of the African diaspora, um, different modalities, religions, beliefs, um, uh, other cultural systems. I was like iconography, symbolism, um, and bladed weapons and stuff like that of the sort from where black people exist all over the globe. So I was like, you know, South America, the actual continent, Southeast Asia. And I was like, and I incorporate that into all my stories. And, you know, I've learned so much from anime culturally, and I just wanted to add to the culture. And I find that as a avid fan of anime and manga, that one of the places that's actively avoided are places of color and black people in general. And we have such a rich culture and we have such a rich um, set of beliefs and story devices, if you will, from our passed down stories that you know it's a shame that then people don't get an opportunity to see that and so once i explain it in that way to that capacity that almost sells everybody like you know e easily when i break it down like that when i go i don't just want skin representation i want cultural representation and the fact that i pull from cultures all over the continent of africa and then as people are flipping they're seeing names and weapons and symbols and icons and in their mind, it's starting to register to them like, oh, this is like any other anime that I'm seeing. And to be honest, it, what makes it unique is that I almost as an avid anime fan, that's them thinking I almost never see people that look like this. I almost never see people with dreads. I almost never see people with, who, you know, with darker skin tones and everything else like that. So, you know, from that perspective, they, they end up being sold because they are being presented something that was brand new. And I felt like that was a really big change from 2018 that I was there to 2021. Like there was just a cultural acceptance that like I could be there and I don't have to just be drawing like the traditional anime characters for people to at least want to come over. So for most people who are like, hmm, I'm not necessarily here for this, but I do, I think your work is great. I think it's fun they kind of hopped over and they just started following 
so you know i ended up bringing in a, a, a lot of um non-black followers just to people who really like the work and um they didn't necessarily you know or they had already spent too much money on their posters they, they would say but they would follow which which i thought is which i also think is just as important i think it's important for other cultural groups to be able to see our culture see us and recognize our humanity so i i still counted that as a win uh vince smoke what are we saying here i can understand seeing black art black anime and not knowing if it's for you or not or not getting it but they, sh they shouldn't stop you from trying to get it uh but yeah like you said once you started getting your pitch off it becomes easier to sell the idea i feel that yeah you know it's it and you know that pitch has to come in just a couple seconds hey william william oliver uh i'm gonna shout you out man because you you um you just uh, pre-ordered a book and i know i believe you're the same person who hit me up on um tiktok to say that you pre-ordered the book so i just want to say thank you i want to say thank you to anybody who supported the book whether you bought it before or you're pre-ordering it now um i appreciate it i love this book and it has you know it's an art book um and it tells a lot of you know it has a lot of the original characters that i've been developing uh, and some of them in my earlier forms to now more developed stuff. So, you know, Iku the Keeper is in that book before I ever did the Iku um, storyboard animatic. And it's very interesting to see that I had that idea when I developed it and then being able to do the storyboard really changed the game for me. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, it's interesting because as black people and other people of color, like we can't look at those things. And this is me responding to nostalgia. We can't look at those things and say, are they not for us or, or for us? Because like we can't avoid it and they're also not that we, we can't avoid it, but it's also mainstream media. So we have to consume it like we have to know everything about other cultures and and the, you know, the predominant culture of, of this country and any other country that we're in. That's not like, you know, the mainland continent. Um, and, you know, I want that feeling to also spread across other you know genres as well. Um, let me answer. Let me see some of these questions. But I get uh, some don't want to invade our spaces and be respectful and all. It's not necessarily like it's not necessarily like an invade our spaces kind of thing. It's not like a blurred con where that girl was like, "Hey, let me cos let me cosplay at this comic con." You know what I'm saying? Like it's more of a situation where they look at it and and in their minds they're like, culturally, I'm not going to get it, so I'm not going to. Like it is not going to connect to me so they don't purchase it. And like if every like black Latino, you know, person felt like even white people, because, you know, certain animes are, are literally legitimately just, you know, they have just Asian characters in them and stuff like that. If they felt that way, they would have missed out on so much of what anime had to offer. So, you know, the way I kind of explain it to them is like what you're looking at is no different than anything else that you've seen per se or how it's being handled the thing that you're seeing is you're getting a different culture that you haven't really experienced yet that has its own form of life energy very similar to i would even say i would say that ashe is very closely related to nen if you will um in that it is like the power to act and it's it's like the quintessential it's quint it's, it's basically hatsu it's, it's exactly what it is so you know like in that sense being able to use that and use the different you know systems i feel like it allows people to be like oh i didn't know that you know black people had a like almost a chi based system right and not just i i can't say, and i'm saying black people but that's really just that culture that practices um um yoruba so you know what i'm saying like i don't know it, it's that like I, it's less of an invading of a space and more of a saying like am i gonna get am i getting value out of this thing that's all black that's what it felt like originally and i felt like this time around the curiosity was higher and i felt like there were a lot of people who were like there were a lot of people who thanked me who were like yo Thank you for actually breaking this down to me because this I really like this and it's you're, you're absolutely right. We never see this and the way I'm telling it to them and the way that they were receiving it, you can tell that they got a lot of value from it and that they were like, damn, if this was an actual anime that I would watch it and I'm glad that someone broke this down to me. You know what I'm saying? 
Uh, but definitely important to see because uh, we have no culture in America uh, and we do too. Oh, because many act like we don't have a culture in America and we do. Absolutely. We have to consume it at the same time, offer it. And we're often excluded from it. These mainstream spaces, you're obviously right. I use O'Shea. Uh, it me, uh, means let it be. I use O'Shea. It means let it be. Uh, oh, shoot. The homie asked me if he can join the live. I don't know if he's still on right now. Um, he probably, I probably fucking lost him. That's why. Sorry, man. I was trying to go through that point, and I, I this, this is fucking uh, United Heroes. I was trying to get to that point so I can like, um, just make that point and probably get to drawing. Then I might have been able to pull him up live afterwards. But he'll probably hop back on. If he hops back on, then I'll go live with him. Um, I do have client work shit that I gotta try to like weasel through. Um, yeah, I, I really want a break from this client work. So. Yeah. But yeah, it was, you know, that was one of the, the key things that I feel like I saw that was different from Anime NYC this year. Oh, well, that's the football image. And like, I gotta get better at backgrounds because they're taking me way too long. I had to do more background studies and stuff because the way I'm doing them, they're not hitting the way they need to. I gotta step my game up. What's up everybody that is on IG? I'm drawing on Twitch if you wanna hop over to Twitch. You do not need an account. You can just sit up there and watch me draw. Uh, if you got questions for me on IG, please um, go over and uh, you can send them here or you can hop over to Twitch. Uh, and drop those questions there. You know what I mean? I'll try to answer them there. Um, here we go. I got my lighter. This is what I was looking for. Oh, this shit was a little too heavy. The synth wave was a little too heavy. Oh, that's way better. So, what's up? Y'all got questions for me? Um, I'm glad you enjoyed your time, though. I'm going to def order the book next week. Bet. Thank you. I appreciate it. There's the hardcover and the soft cover are up for um, pre-order, so. All right, let's get into this fight. I'm drawing a mall. And, um. Yeah, let's get it. I like to do... For my clients where I have these full backgrounds for, I like to do the backgrounds like completed first and then start drawing the characters in the space because um, the backgrounds end up being so tedious for me. So we're just going to get into some painting and shit. Okay, we can just a little bit lighter. Like I said, if y'all got questions, let me know. Uh, will I have time for an art critique this stream, or do you have a lot to get done? Yo, if you, I don't think you've ever dropped a stream in um, Nostalgia, so if you want to, I will make time for it. Uh, it's better to do it sooner than later, um, while I got the wherewithal to be able to do it. So, um, yeah, if you want me to do a critique, I can. Drop those points in there, we could get to it. This is actually building up pretty nicely. I've actually made a lot of headway. Bad, I'll drop it and you can get it whenever. Sure. Um, sure, 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 that works. Was I just painting that blue over? Oh, my light went out, my secondary light. All right, well, my camera's just gonna have to work a little bit harder this time around. Oh, I didn't turn it down, that's why. That is super bright. I have four batteries, so I need to find where my other batteries are. Um, but I got a brand new like desk set 
that is connected to a wall. It's gonna fucking pain to like set it up fully and, and set up all my stuff. So I have to go back and find all of my uh, my batteries. Yo, Vinsmoke, you got a lot of darkness points. I mean, like you either that or my uh, my point things are are uh, fairly low. I mean, you dropped all the workout stuff and the 2K points. Yo, shout out to you, man. Shout out to you. That means you've been on the stream for a minute. Buying your time and wait. And I appreciate that. All right. Um, where should we go around? Okay, so there's a few things I need to establish in this drawing. Alright, I need to establish some better planes. Like, there's probably going to be more of a shadow back behind those pillars over there. So I hope I didn't draw that on the background fully. 9k left. Wow, I've been in the shadows, man. Very much so earned all those points you've been here chopping it up making the streams dope It's gonna hit in here, it's gonna hit very different. And technically, the fences would be up here too, so I didn't remember to put that in there. Uh, do I have a book I can buy? Dope animations, yes, I, yes. There is a book that you can get. Um, it is my art book. It is up for pre-order. It ships in January. So, uh, yeah, if you want to pre-order it, you pre-order it now. To be honest, if I hit all my pre-orders that I need before January, then I'll order it before January. Um, it takes about two weeks to ship. So, you know, if I could get the pre-orders necessary before you know um the holidays holidays like you know december 20th or whatever it is then i'll go ahead and i'll order those books and they will ship in the middle of january um and then i'll start sending people's books out sooner than later you know that's that would be ideal so if you want pre-order that book get it to you sooner and uh in advance uh, thank you in advance This, uh, this thing is starting to be a bit of a slog. I gotta just start blocking out a lot more stuff too. Just do a nice little wooden box here. Yeah, I want to study, um, or I, not I want to, I have to study 
Jake Wyatt um, Necropolis. I love the way he does his backgrounds. They're really dope. And, you know, this is, I mean, this, this dude's a master of his craft. Um, so, you know, that's going to be really hard to do. But he, uh, he has this way of really simplifying his um, backgrounds and doing them full color that are just, like, really, really dope. I know I talk about this dude's uh, comic all the time, but it's like one of my favorite indie fantasy comics to read. Like, and I call it indie because it's, you know, he's published it on, on Tumblr. So it's free to read. Um, and it's extraordinarily dope. I've read it. I've read, it's not finished. So I've read through where he's gotten to. I'm not exaggerating at least 10 times, maybe more. Um, because whenever I need like good fantasy, like feelings of inspiration, um, I go right back to it. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's something special, man. It really is. Wow. It's going to force me to change that color to green in order for me to get the real. That's tragic. I didn't want to do that. Um, yeah, whenever I really want to get that real fantasy vibe, um, I go read, uh, Necropolis. Shit, it's just, it's fire. Um, and I hope to, like, have that kind of a feeling when I tell some of the stories that I want to tell. Like, Stone Prison, um, you know, this isn't, it's in a fantasy universe, man. I mean, this could easily be a, uh, like some prison you know in the middle of a desert in necropolis's you know universe essentially like that's how fantasy i want to bring it so i really got to consider that in the clothing and you know the style of the characters and stuff um there's a lot of stuff that i want to i'm trying to consider it's interesting enough like this is not like my magnum opus it's not like my you know end all be all but it's like i do want to um I do want people to come away from it, you know, just feeling, I don't know, affected. Um, I don't know. I want people to have a certain feeling like an emotional connection or a reaction um, to Stone Prison when they read it, you know, maybe not emotional, but they, they, as they read it, they're like, oh, I'm in a, I'm in a different place. Um, and that's, you know, it takes a lot of consideration. Cover some of these gaps. Do this shit all the time. I really should just be fully coloring these and then doing the edges and the runoff on the edges. Let's just block everything out. Get everything nice and cleanly blocked. All right, that's what I'm going to do. All right, so for everybody that's on my IG, I'm um, sorry my lighting's fucked up. My other light died. I did not charge it enough, and I had it at 100%. Um, I could charge it a little bit here, but um, I'm actually drawing on Twitch. You do not need an account to watch me draw on Twitch. You could just hop over there, and if you do have an account, consider giving me a follow and uh, checking out when I go live. Um, I'm trying to go live more often. Uh, but anime NYC, other parts of my business kind of killed that. Um, I had to figure out some stuff for my shipping for my brand new posters, supply chain stuff, a lot of things going on. Um, but I am going to try to make it at least once a week, you know, get in here, drop some content. Um, I think I also need it myself so I can just kind of get back to my love of uh, drawing certain things. Um, Yeah, because the commission work is kind of killing me from that a little bit. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I 
thought I had left some blue in the background here. And I probably could leave some of that blue in there because it's going to be nighttime while coloring this. Yeah, everything that's going to hit on the top is probably going to have a blue glare. Yeah, everybody that's on IG, I'm drawing on Twitch. Oh. Oh, Deoxy, what is up? First time chat. Thank you for hopping in and dropping something in there. What's my favorite part of the illustration process? Sketch, line, or color? Sketch. <laughs> I, I love... I, I've... Now that I now that every drawing that I do has a perspective grid and my chat will tell you um, I, I love just sketching and throwing um, just throwing things in there uh, because like I think sketching. All right, I'm about to get a little bit deeper here and I'm going to try to make it quick uh, and um, I think sketching is the best way of getting the big idea across and i think what kills a lot of people in starting their projects is they don't they they get so um micro with their ideas and so they start thinking about them finished opposed to just going from sketch to finish and realizing that that, that it is a process and i find that when i'm laying down sketches and the idea is starting to come across that i love the idea that is being built and kind of being portrayed um i recently just drew a bunch of characters on the last chat and they look like a little ragtag football team and they were just sketched out and i just i don't know i love like sketching out the football field and everything else like that and when you look at that you go that's the big idea and so like now your idea is has come across um and i think i don't know i think that's dope like i i just I love being in, in, in when you're sketching, like you could sketch out a shit ton of ideas. And if you see some of my, um, like some of my speed drawing videos, you'll see that in like the first part of my drawings, I will have sketched out like four or five ideas. And then you'll see some of those ideas will show up as final renderings right later down the line. Cause I'm just like, I'm just laying shit down like, all right, boom, 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 lay this down, boom, lay this down. Oh, this is a great idea. Let me develop it. Boom. Let me, let me get closer to developing it. And I don't know, man, there's just something special being able to just like get your ideas out very quickly. Um, and this, my second favorite thing, and it's because it's something that I like got into, uh, like a lot early on is like lighting most people follow me because of lighting um so when i get to the point where it's time for me to light and start doing like the render stuff and my chat will also tell you like i, I like to experiment because i feel like new and cooler and better shit comes out of that experimentation um when i get to that point then i just start experiment with the different layer styles different brushes and like what a brush may kind of give in a certain layer style and effect. And when you land that, like, I don't know, when you land that kind of effect with the right color, there's just something where you go, damn, this is it. Like, I know I got a bop here. You know what I mean? I did that on the last stream where I was doing, um, I was doing a drawing for a client and he wanted the character to feel very imposing. And I was like, okay, like I shot him from a down angle. He looked big and everything else. Like that. And he wanted an aura. So I was like, let me do this with aura. And I said, you know what I, I haven't done when I've done aura? Like I haven't done a radio blur with the aura. So I was like, all right, fuck it. Let me do, let me do this radio blur. Um, so I, uh, I did a radio blur, like, you know, center chest. And then as I'm seeing the rays like come out of the body, it, they feel like they're coming towards you, you know, just by the the outline that I did and, and everything else, like the planes look like it's being projected toward you. And I was like, this is perfect. And if I just did my regular blur and then added in, you know, my cloud lighting and the cracked lighting with the fucking the um, glow layer and everything else like that, like it would have looked cool, but I wouldn't have gotten that opposing feeling that I really wanted to get and um so i love sketching and then when i get to that final portion of it i really like the experimentation with the lighting um you know i think one of the things that has helped me a lot is i am not a 
afraid to like fail or to be a failure in that capacity so it allows me to practice a lot of stuff so deoxy thank you for chiming in and adding that question i'm actually just going to turn on my overhead lights i hope this doesn't blow me out and then i'm going to leave this light here give me one second brb Based on my white lights, but my these yeah, these lights feel very yellow. That's why that's why I don't always like using them. And my background feels a little dingy because I have my pure white light here. And what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna drop this light lower. Um because my top light is casting a shadow on my face. So this is what we're gonna do. Come on now. There we go. Now there's a fucking light directly in my face. Um, all right. But yeah, that's my favorite part, sketching part. Um, I did used to love backgrounds, but now they've taken me fucking forever. And um, I want to find a new way and a new method to do backgrounds. I just need the time for experimentation. So, that's where I'm at. Let's see. Oh, and uh, letting you guys know that I am getting a new Cintiq. Um, new Cintiq, new Cintiq pen. I've been having some issues with this and I do not want to wait till the last second, you know, to actually like get a new pen. So. Why is it, this shit's already acting real funny. Great Art King, big fan. Thank you, uh, Jenna. Appreciate it. It's great to see your process videos as the sketches are a few versions before the final one yeah i go through a ton of versions i also you know i think it's really important that people um people kind of see that about artists and what they do because there's this misconception we just kind of like pull it out of our asses and there's like a long process to get to that point right um so that way it feels like you know it feels right we do a lot of drawing just to get to that point and uh i think one of the best things that clip studio did was kind of add that as a feature um because then now people see like how much work actually goes into it and i feel like they it hits different i can appreciate it different you know like every stroke every drawing every bit of that is created by us you know Nostalgia, I've not forgot about your, your your stuff too. I'm gonna do it. I just wanna establish these walls in the background and then I'm gonna do that. Um, but yo, Deoxy, thanks for hopping over and uh, joining the chat, man. I, I appreciate it. You're a great artist, so it's really, you know, I love being able to connect with other really great artists. I thumbnail like four or five different concepts before I settle on one, then I can choose uh, changes like three times. 
um yeah i mean that's you know what i should th i should thumbnail more like on a smaller level i uh, gotta get back to work with you man thank you i appreciate that um i should thumbnail a lot more um but i i also get a little impatient um and i want to work on that you know because I, I, I a big portion of it is i don't have all the time in the world to really draw right now so um as that changes you know and i start and i actually do start having a little bit more of that time i think i am going to be able to do like more sketches and you know include a couple things and make it a little bit better um make my my selections i should say a little bit better bro i'm a graphic design and photo editor and youtube uh channel designer you need me connect uh I'm designer you need me connect uh naeem thanks for that i mean i draw as my nighttime thing and for my day job i am a designer um and i work with brands like intel microsoft dell um and i like design brands and stuff like that for them but i appreciate you plugging yourself i appreciate you reaching out um but i'm good man thank you I think artists need that from time to time. They do need designers to come in and kind of like think about something from a design perspective and not just from an art one. So that's why I told old boy, you know, I appreciate him hopping in. Um, Cause you know, sometimes I feel like his services definitely are needed. Not by me, but uh, you know, in general. Bummy, what is crackalacking? Bummy Gaming Ninja, what's going on? Oh, me Ninja Gaming, excuse me. That's my dyslexia kicking in. Alright. I think I've established this line enough for the top part of this wall. Let's do it on the bottom. Crew is back. What's up, y'all? Hopping in on IG. Uh, hop over to Twitch to see what I'm drawing. You do not need an account. You can just go to the Twitch link in my bio, or follow the link here, or go to Twitch and just type in Mike Tony Design, and you can see what I'm drawing. You can hear the music that's playing in the background. It is a superior experience watching me draw on Twitch than it is looking at my ugly mug on IG. Sure. Yo, Mersey, I don't know if you're still on, but uh, did you go to Anime NYC, man? Were you there? Oh, I didn't let people know that they rioted there too, actually. So I said that people were waiting in line, but it wasn't like people just ate that experience. Uh, they were waiting in line, and then um, somebody, I guess, came out of a side door and, uh, you know, to leave. And then people saw that as an opportunity to be like, yo, I'm getting in this bitch. And they did. Shit's crazy. Oh, I like this song, too. That's coming up. It's fire. That's OD. Yeah, it was very OD. I know, like, thinking about people getting violent at an anime convention. 
thinking to yourself like what but yeah it was popping for real yeah i think the walls are established well enough some texture on those walls but that's it. this is what needs to happen for now everybody that's on IG which is what two people hop over to twitch check it out do yourself a favor That's what this needs to be. So I need to just go a little bit lower. Get that sort of right. Okay. No, that's, <laughs> that's too low. That looks horrible. All right, that's fine. Flatten this out here. I can't go too far back to the top and it doesn't look right. That's what it is. This part goes too far back. It really needs to be more flat. Okay. That's not bad. A little more shading in the back again. What's up y'all on IG, hop over to Twitch, or if you got questions here, add those questions in, that way I can get back to y'all. What kind of device am I working on? Right now I'm working on uh, Wacom Cintiq, um, the Companion, uh, which is dope. You know, I love the Companion, I've had this thing for like six years now. I'm streaming on it now. Um, you know, I, I actually only use it for drawing because I do not like Windows devices. Um, but they don't have a Mac operating system on this, so. Uh, but in a couple of days, I should be using a, a Wacom Mobile Studio. And a 16 inch to that. It would be bigger than the version I'm using now. Just by about two inches or so. Which I'm really excited about that space because like anybody who knows when you when you draw on like a 22 inch fucking Cintiq and, and it's like drawing on a big piece of paper and you can see the full version of it. Man, there is nothing like that. Um, it's it's I've said it before. It's intoxicating. Um, like, you know, because working on this smaller device everything i draw feels so macro and then i end up having to pull back right um i end up having to like you know zoom in pull out zoom in pull out and when i've drawn on a 22 inch and it's just you just draw directly on it and you're getting all your proportions and everything there's nothing like that man you love an upgrade yeah and you know what's funny is i hate spending money on my on myself i really do i used to be really really broke growing up um, and you know, like m spending money on shit that was not a necessity was like a fucking no, no, you know what I mean? So like when I have to buy things, I have no problem buying something for somebody else. Like I could drop hundreds on someone else. Like, yo, here, fucking here's 500, here's a thousand or whatever. Boom. Um, but if I'm, if I got to buy something for myself, like, especially after having this antique for, like I said, six years. You know, knock on wood, it hasn't broken and shit. And I'm like, well, do I get a mobile studio? I'm like, but this one hasn't broken yet. Like, can I justify that spend? I'm like, you've made so much money using this. Of course you can. Um, 
but yeah, I'm excited. You know, it's kind of, it's a, it's, yeah. Excited about being able to get it, about being less nervous about my device, but also having a way more powerful device, you know, that I'll be able to do stuff on. More animating, more drawing. My streams will be better. Um, or at least, at least, even if they're not like insanely better, the difference between my streams will be, um, you know, less CPU usage, less fan kind of going off. Right now my fan's not crack, cracking right now, but it's like, you know, I can't have the my Chrome open because my Chrome is a power suck right now. Um, yeah, and then like, after doing all this shit, my computer will probably restart like while I'm sleeping, which is trash. Um, which way comes into my using now? I'm using the companion. So, uh, I love it, man. I love this companion. Like, before the pandemic, 95% of the art that you guys were seeing, I was doing on the go. So I would draw to and from work every day. And that would give me almost three hours of work to be able to do every day. So, and I, you know, some people, they like to watch YouTube. They're on other shit. I'm literally sitting in my Long Island Roto seat, just fucking drawing, cranking away. I would finish like a commission a day when I had that time. Um, so I, I love it. Oh, facts. Love the animatic on TikTok you posted. Oh, thank you. Yeah, definitely want to upgrade my laptop. Um, yeah, thank you. That animatic is one that I did when I took the rad how to class for storyboarding, which fucking changed the game for me in every like way of my artwork. Um, so I recommend it to anybody, um, or to everybody. And, uh, it's so funny because I was going back through and I did like a fake Netflix page for people a while back. My followers will, will remember. And then I did the fake next Netflix page. And then below that, I had like the equal, the keeper fight thing. And I was like, yeah, I want to do this fight in a club. And, um, you know, like Jaden Smith, like Sire will be playing in the back, uh, not Sire, but like the song rapper will be playing in the background, blah, 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 blah. And at the time, like I had wrote that, that was like a year before taking the class and then being able to like actually do it and how I perceived it in my mind because I was not a part of the initiated, like I didn't fully understand cinematography in that way, was very different than when I actually did it. So I was going back today for um, Ready, You Must Be On My TikTok, you know, not necessarily my IG. Um, I was going back through to like write my description. And as I'm going through the description, I'm reading the thoughts that I had on it. And to be able to see that written and then see it in action, like even though I did it myself and it's not like some fully animated thing, to see it in action and to, and every time I watch that animatic, I still love it. Like I still, I love the scene where the car pulls up. A lot of people don't notice there's a lot of little shit that I add in that animatic that's just really like fun. I don't know, there's like little fun things. Like for example, when they first get out the whip in front of the club, the dude who's driving the car, um, he jumps over the car lid. He slides over the car lid before they walk in. So like once they open the door, you see Iku gets out of like the front side, passenger side, the other dude gets out of the back. And you see the one guy that walks around and the nigga that's driving the car hops over and he slides over the lid of the car but it's on the edge of the screen so you don't necessarily see it so what i've learned differently what i've learned with my cinematography is just making sure there's like a cone of recognition that you want to keep like you want to keep like all your visuals in that cone of recognition but every time i go back and i watch that animatic I still like it and I'm still excited by it. Like, holy shit, if this ever became a real thing, you know, and I'm like, this is this the closest I'll get to being like what a filmmaker's like. No, I followed you on IG first and then seeing your TikTok, I was like, oh, follow. Oh, dope. Dope, dope, dope. Well, that video was up there um, early. So it's like, it was a 2020 video um, and I'm just adding it to TikTok. So I'm just, you know, finding ways to repurpose some of my TikTok stuff. Um, but yeah. Thank you for that. Appreciate it. The dense watercolor in here. 
realistically this should be like this and this should be here we're just gonna lighten this i think one of the things too that i uh to lighten that to lighten that a little bit more a little yellow there we go um one thing I, I like about painting backgrounds is like understanding the light change in planes, which is always I, I I always feel like it makes your shit it makes you feel like you really know what you know what's going on, and it's so much more sleek. Please don't have frozen on me. Put my mouse back in here. Uh, I wish I could retake a storyboarding and cinematic class. Yo, uh, take the rad class. Shit was game changing for me. Oh. Oh no. All right, so my driver just desynced. Now my cousin, he sent me a message about how to um he sent me a message about how you can resync your driver without having to restart your computer the rad secrets one yeah the rad secrets one yeah oh but it's in my dms i'm gonna have to hop off live well i've been on live for over an hour and 30 minutes so this is a lot longer than I expected for my IG. Um, I don't want to restart this because I got the eyes of darkness that I want to do. And I want at least 20 minutes for that. Um, yo, Nostalgia, did you send me the video via IG or your image via IG that you want me to uh, critique? All right, ready? Yeah, hop over to Twitch. I am going to continue to draw over there. Um, I'm going to figure out how I can reset my driver, uh, without having to restart my, um, computer. Cause this is going to be a game changer for me going forward in the future. All right, everybody on IG, uh, for the three people that are on, you want to continue watching me, continue watching me via Twitch. My artwork's on there anyway. It's going to be a lot more fun experience. There's music that's playing. There's more people commenting over there who have interesting stuff to say. You don't need an account. You can just pop over and watch. Still a fun thing. Still see my face as well. So, all right, for everybody hopped on, thank you. I appreciate you. About to use my phone for some other stuff. Help me figure out how to get my shit together. But uh, see you guys soon. Peace. All right, Twitch. Let's see. I'm gonna plug this in here. That's getting warmed up. All right. Ready, let's go. Thank you for the follow. Appreciate it. View insights. 54 comments. Cool. Peak occurrence 12. I didn't know I had 12 people on at once. Let's go. First time chat from the viewer. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. All right. While I'm figuring this out, please, guys, feel free to flood the chat. Nostalgia, you said you sent that already. Uh, I'm going to have to go and see um, the Art of Procrastination. Yeah. Come on. When my cousin hit me up to tell me about my post uh, that I did where the guy was punching, he wasn't looking in the right direction. I was like, got that right. I completely missed that. Um, Come on, PJ the MJ, where did you send me that link, bro? Um, 
Come on. Yes. Here we go. Make sure your Wicom product is. Uh, I'm gonna start to, to check. Left a voicemail with the answer to your problem. You should try it and see if you can do it next time. All right. Of course, dude. This clip. Yes, this is Clip Studio. So you know what? While this shit is sitting here, let me go to a more interesting uh, boom image that I'm working on. Here we go. This is some other stuff that I'm working on. It's Oak Knight in that main city. Um, I wish my pen would just come back on. All right, let's see. Oh shoot, I got a bunch of voicemails. <laughs> yeah. Services. All right. Yo, <laughs> my cousin spent, he gave me two minute breakdown of this right now. So now I gotta hop on here real quick. Bruh, say, <laughs> bruh said add the sauce, yes. I'm trying, man, I'm trying. Dude, like, but this background is fucking weak because like, it's just, like I need more time to like, like it needs to be more filled in. It just need like there needs to just be stuff all over the place. I need to get pictures of like corner stores or whatever it is and like take that stuff and I need to photo bash, like photo bash the fuck out of like the inner these insides of these stores and stuff and store signs and everything else like that. Cause I created all these signs, but it's like, I don't have all that time. You know what I'm saying? To, be, to do this in this way. Uh, what I did want to do though, while I'm in here with a mouse instead of using my thing is I want to see what it looks like what this looks like with the this here I'm just gonna duplicate it dupe drop the bottom okay gotta have the And then I want to get rid of this main one here. Yeah, and I think if I do this selection, create a selection, I'm actually going to close this by about four pixels. Oh no. Do Times Square inspo. It's mostly like this kind of a uh, cyberpunky area, you know, sort of. Um, Close this and put one here. And let's zoom in. I'm actually, there's actually no space around here. Barely any. Let me, uh, I need this green. Let's expand it by one pixel. Of this a little bit brighter. The green. Let's zoom out. A little bit is there. A little bit of there is fine. You know, that's the plan. I might add some more. Um, I might add some more. Uh, I'm not about to continue this drawing by hand. I would be fucking loco. Um, 
but I do want to just I really should just be going through the driver shit, but I really want to see this now that I'm looking at this. Alright, come on. It's not gonna let me put that over there. Alright, fine. <laughs> Okay, open a Windows, search services. Uh, use online services in there. I do not allow Microsoft to use your voice and speech, no. All right, let me see if my cousin's saying it again. Let me see. <laughs> this is like, it's like impossible to get to this. Okay. All right, I think my cousin's streaming right now too. All right, let me see this real quick. Which I do. I think I have Windows now. Services window. No. All right. Let's try this again. There the services app came up. Okay, service local services. There we go. Now, on a Mac, this shit would take 30 seconds. In the services window, scroll down until you find lock up, professional service, name column. You find lock up, professional services, highlight it. Yeah. You stop the service. Dude, this is crazy. Yeah. So stop the service. Yeah. Yo, that's crazy! Hey, yo. I think my cousin is playing games right now. I owe him... This is fucking crazy. He doesn't like cussing, man. He doesn't like swearing, but yo. What the fuck? Oh my god. Yo, what the fuck? Yo. What the fuck? Oh my god, are you fucking kidding me? Oh my god, I'm fucking I'm about to I'm about to I'm about to return my my Cintiq uh, mobile studio. Um the one I just bought, fuck it. I'm I'm fucking I'm reinvigorated, bro. One of the big reasons why I wanted to get that shit is this driver would just shit the bed on me from time to time. And you guys just, oh my God, are you fucking kidding me? 
from the time I got it, the driver was shit the bed. And I remember him, him messaging me being like, yo, bro, it happens from time to time. Like it actually happens to everybody. So it's not just your device. Like people have had this issue with Lake on for a long time. Nigga, what? Yo, it was that easy typing in services, stop the services and have this shit come back on. Oh my God. Yo, you guys don't even fucking know every time I have to restart it because of some bullshit driver thing. I all I also have to reset like all my hotkeys and shit. And I just recently this year found out that I could download my settings for my hotkeys or whatever and then re-upload them. So I was still restarting and then I would have to re-upload them, but then I'd have to recalibrate my pen. It was a whole fucking thing. And then it would always happen at the worst time. It'd be like, yo, I'm traveling. I can finally use my Cintiq. I would waste 20 fucking minutes just resetting up all my fucking settings again. This is fucking crazy. This is fucking insane. I can't even let, I can't even explain to you guys the fucking feeling that I have because it's like, wow. Yo, my cousin's name is PJ Elliott on Twitch. Um, go and follow him if you fucking can. PJ Elliott. Oh my God, dude. Y'all don't even under fucking stand. Oh my God. You guys, you guys have no fuck. You guys really don't understand. Bro, oh my, I'm fucking speechless. I just, this shit is a fucking game changer. This shit is a fucking game changer. I can't believe that that just worked. Uh, oh my God. It almost doesn't even like feel fair. That shit is so crazy. It's fucking insane. I can't believe that that worked. Wow. I think I think I am going to have to close my um I think I am going to have to close my uh Oh, this is what I was talking about earlier in the chat, y'all. For some reason it's not letting me write on on my actual uh screen thing. It's being a little baby back bitch. But the actual pin is not off. It's just the, um, it's just Clip Studio is, is messed up, so. But yo, this is what I was talking about with the wake, with the, um, yo, I stepped away for a bit, what happened? Dog, nigga. All right, so my Cintiq, from the time I bought it, the driver will fucking reset. Um, and it's been frustrating because I have to restart my computer every fucking time it happens. But when I have to hard reset it, um, I also have to set up my settings all over again. So while you stepped away, my Cintiq fucking shit the bed again. Not the Cintiq entirely, but the driver disconnected. So my cousin, like two months ago, hit me up about the driver and was like, yo, here's your problem. Um, if you have Windows 10, which I had, he goes, all you got to do, pop in the services. Then when you go to your local services, basically turn off the local service that is Wacom and then turn it on again. And you'll never have to, I'll never have to restart my stream or reset my shit. My settings are still here and everything else like that. The only problem is, is, um, is, um, Clip Studio is doing its little glitch thing, but I don't give a fuck if I have to close the Clip Studio. Um, oh my God, I can't fucking believe that. Yo, that shit's a game changer. Oh my God, that is a game changer. All right, so this is a picture <laughs> that I, I was talking about sketching before. Deoxy brought this up. He asked me, uh, what's my favorite process? You know, and I said sketching and I sketched a bunch of ideas. You know, here I was literally just drawing boxes um, in the background. And from those boxes, you know, originally I was drawing. Uh, this was like an eyes of darkness thing where I was critiquing uh, someone's work and I was just drawing a bunch of stuff in the space. And I, I love that. I love being able to just sketch things in the space. And then from that sketch basically came this, um, which was, you know, a bunch of kids that want to play on this football team. 
well, they, they want to start a football team at their school and there isn't one and they're just a ragtag team of kids that want to play. And I just sketched this up. Um, I can't believe this dog. I really can't. I can't believe it was just that easy. Um, wow, I'm so used to like doing a bunch of different stuff too like set it up to get my settings back like I don't think y'all understand how much how much of a game changer that was um, all right I'm gonna I'm actually gonna save this and call it ragtag and then I'm gonna open up a new page just followed your cousin here uh, ragtag He's also a really great artist. I'm, I'm bigging him up in that capacity. Um, but yeah, he's a fantastic artist. He's one of the dudes that I really started learning art from a long time ago. Um, and, you know, was my original art mentor. Um, very direct dude, very straightforward. Um, you know, he's not gonna, um, bro mind blown i know man he just oh about him being a mentor of mine or just like how he just changed the game with me resetting my fucking drivers this is crazy i'm just like i'm so speechless i'm just so taken back because this caused me so many headaches man like i can't even explain i can't explain it I can't explain it, man. I can't. I, I can't even believe that just happened. This is why you gotta stream. That's why I gotta do this every day, man. How oh, he changed the game for you. Yeah, I know. I am on a ball, man. It just this is nuts. Nuts. Now I'm back here. I'm still streaming. I'm still being able to draw this. Oh man. Alright, with that being said. Let's hop into a brand new page. Let's do a brand new Eyes of Darkness. Um, really feeling the music. It's still bumping. Yeah, we're in a good place. I can't believe it was just that. It's so crazy. It's so crazy. All right, before I open up the new thing and see the orientation, I'm gonna go through and continue as Mike Tony, yes, double verification. I will double sign in. People try to hack my account pretty regularly. So I have, you know, double authentication set up like a mofo on here. Uh, I have like other emails and stuff like that because it's just, it's nuts how cats just want to jump into the account and just fuck it up. Um, Prepares to take notes, uh, but mentor trying to now mind's blown. I need our mentors. Yeah, I mean, you know, he. Uh, uh, we can save your login info on this browser, so you don't need to enter it again. No, 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 nigga. That's another thing. I don't save a lot of fucking. I don't save on a lot of browsers. Makes it too easy for people to jack your shit. I have 10 requests in here. All right. Add nostalgia to the primary. Okay, you're giving me a lot to work with, man. Save image as Vin Smoke. All right. Now, now I'm gonna do a vertical orientation, custom, ram, let's go. All I know is complex. All right, let's do it then. Let's get it. All right, import. I can't believe that shit. I cannot believe it. It almost does not feel fair. 
fair. Like, what the fuck? I can't believe that shit. Jeez, man. All right, let's get into it. <laughs> I can't believe that, dog. I just, I, I fucking can't believe it. I really can't. I don't think you guys understand, like, dog, how just insane that is for me. All right, Vince Smoke, let's get into it. Oh, we got these two characters here. You're gonna have to talk me through this. I'm assuming the woman who's flying up top is an ethereal person. Is that correct? That person is like a spirit some to some degree manifesting, right? Um, and then it looks like he's praying. He's getting a power. All right, so let's talk about the things I like. Um, I like the color palette for sure. This kind of grayish uh, tone with the gold and stuff like that. I think it works really well. I think it's strong. Um, facial expressions. My man looks like he is in fact dearly praying, you know, like he, he earnestly wants something, uh, hairstyle design choices in terms of like the chest dress, the arm man, and the, uh, color effects and stuff I think are pretty good. Um, You know, I think all that stuff kind of, I, I like those things. I think they're pretty good. Uh, she's manifesting from the prayer hands. Okay. I see that. And it's kind of going behind him. Okay. Uh, and, but again, if you sell your companion and want to upgrade, and want to upgrade, just to upgrade. Oh, you're talking about you trying to buy the, you trying to buy my old companion? Uh, ready, let's go. Yeah, you know, someone told me to sell it. I might, I might actually auction it. You know, like I might just, it might just auction it, like, not monetary wise, but just do like a fucking a raffle for it. People, you know, I don't know, do something. They get a raffle ticket. They get it. You know. Um. All right. So I like a lot of, the, I like a lot of those aspects that that go along with it. Um, color, facial expression, everything else like that. I think, you know, we talked about this before. Um, continuity, you know, certain parts of the drawing are, you know, in different perspectives and stuff like that. I think this could also go and work well for a perspective change too, you know, potentially. Um, but first I'm going to, first I'm going to work through the perspective that you're, you're already doing. So, and then I'm going to work through one I think may potentially work, uh, for this and, and just kind of why, um, so let's just kind of lighten this up here and we're going to make a couple of assumptions now because I can see the top parts. Let's go blue because I can see the top parts of the person's shoulders. I'm assuming that the perspective is going back here and I'm assuming that I'm on top, right? So we got this here. That will be like his body. And it looks like we're also going down. So we have also another perspective grid down here. It looks like, which means that everything that goes up here is going to be bigger. And as it goes down, it's going to be smaller. The grid is going to help us respect the spacing. This is what I think I'm understanding. And then this woman is over his head. So let's just uh, make this smaller. Yeah, get it close to this, it's close to the size that you actually have it. Uh, and uh, purple, and purple draw some anatomy in here, arms, and they're gonna be you're praying, praying like this. So your arms will be tight, but they'll probably be be tight, and they'll be a little bit forward. And I'm actually going to do the perspective grid. I'm just laying some things in for, for me, uh, ideas wise, right? Go blue again. And then she's like right here. Looks like her hand is like up. And she has a hand that's over here. All right. 
So, let's get this idea and let's lay down these uh, perspective grids. So this is what I think you're working with here. Let's do a line like right here. I think also you probably have a second perspective down here that's going up. Let's cut down the middle if you want. Let's go this way. All right, well, let's turn this off. Get into some purple, deep purples and see. So again, we're going to respect our perspective. I'm going to make the character a little bit smaller so I can get your full scene in here. And again, if we're respecting the perspective, front of his neck will be here, going back into space. Shoulders will be here, probably. Keep in mind, I am moving quickly. And I'm going to do boxes just to start us off. This probably will include his arms too. This this one box could, could include his arms. We're coming from a top angle, looking down on this man praying. And his arms will come forward just a little bit tightly. Remember, now we're seeing the tops of everything. So we're definitely seeing the tops of his forearms as that meat squishes his muscle squishes against his arms bands bands make a dance here um and i'm just showing the bottom part of the bottom of the body just because we would see that but everything is respect in that perspective going back and we're going to enforce that with the curve of the eyes too you got the bottom we got this the, the bottom C, if you will. Now, if you want him looking up, which you might want, because he's praying and it shows, it looks like he's praying here. You could you could do a top C here, but then it, then we're looking more directly at his face. Yeah, he's looking up. And so let's say this is part of his hair. He's coming this way. Now what this affords us by like, you know, playing around with that space and going back and us seeing the top of it and the puppet feeling right. Um, it, it affords us an opportunity to like, you know, get really big with this deified woman that's here. And she still has to respect everything that's kind of going on. Because technically there is a vertice at the bottom going up. But the cool thing about that, because we're we've really established those vertices, that those lines coming up, it's drawing our eyes up toward this woman, you know, and we get something that feels more visually like um, guiding, if you will. I know I'm not doing a very great job, like etching her out. This is more just getting across the idea. Now let's say, get the rib cage. It's really should smallen that rib cage there. Small, make the rib cage smaller, so I can really bring out some hips here. And overlap again. Breasts will probably overlap those ribs. Now, like a shot like this, and let me put this in um, a folder. I can't fucking believe that, that that just worked. You know, like this is, is a, is a, is a, 
a straight on and you're seeing him it looks like he's praying you give more real estate i think and this feels a little it feels a little bit more drastic but we also feel like we're actually looking from a camera now like a camera we're looking down it's telling a bit of a story it's also you know we see his face his face is looking up and as we know if you're looking at an image an average person looking at an image will follow the face of the character that's there and we've basically centered his face in the middle of the screen so it's inevitable that we look at him the woman is also looking down at him you know we've reinforced a lot of stuff that draws our eye to him and let's change the color of this you let's change the color let's just pull this down a little bit more and so with that prayer hands i guess he's praying part of that's i feel like a little bit more reinforced feels a little bit more cinematic um and you get some reference to her now you can still do like this thing too um we have the symbol you know it it still fits within your your range of your focal point but i feel like now we know a little bit more of what we want to focus on and it feels you know the anatomy and stuff like that it feels it feels like it fits in the space you know a little bit more now if you want to make this a little bit more dramatic you could always just take this dude and uh this dude i'll say up it not by not by an extreme but by some and i think it still kind of works. I personally, I like something like this a little bit more because there's a sense of everything has different sizes. And if you think about like the Fibonacci sequence or you think about patterns in space or whatever, when you get a lot of things that are too close in size, it shit gets very busy. But when you can change the, the importance in this, when you change the size of things, you give it different levels of importance, but you also make it a lot easier to read. So it's very easy to read these different elements because you have this small element in the middle, you have the medium element of the guy praying, and then you have this large element of this deified woman that's here. Does that make sense? What do you think about that? Um, nostalgia before I move on to what I think may also work from a different perspective. Yeah, I got you on the camera angle thing. But also I feel like, you know, when you when you see your character, like even here, his arms, regardless if you don't want to change the, the camera angle, this should be happening. You might see a little brackis because the muscle is being squeezed some. But that should be happening. So his armbands, and you know, this is perfect because those armbands could really help you indicate that those arms are going forward. And then if the if he's praying like this, then these you know, when you pray the your your elbows are gonna go forward a little bit, like they're going forward, but your praying hands aren't necessarily like bent to you like this they're actually out like if you're praying you know you're like this and everything kind of angles forward like this so you're just like you know you're not you're not going to be directly up or even if your hands are closed like this unless you're bringing them in tight and you're like very desperate if you're just praying your hands up like this it's more than likely they're going to come in and they're going to point up he's crossing his hands right yeah so more than likely he's crossing his fingers so more than likely it's not going to tilt in like this. It's probably going to be more outward, more directly up. 
and then you know you basically just take this and that bend is slight but like you know I'm not even doing much with your with your actual anatomy I'm just adding those C curves forward and you can actually see that my hands come in you know it's probably a little out and then in. there's a my little um, this bone here for your carpal uh, hand you, you those carpal ligaments and all that other shit that's here so then I would think that these would basically come in and be a little flat and they cross over now this would, these would be a little bit bigger but even that is a game changer but then now when I'm getting up to where like the shoulder is and you would have to show more of that to indicate where we are top angle but even if you look at those hands there as I'm drawing over it they feel they feel a little bit more voluminous um, and then I might have played with the girl in space a little bit and moved her like back and hand over here taking a hand and put it on her chest right here you see also by moving her back and then changing her C's that also gives depth you know to, to a situation now not every not every drawing needs depth you know like some things have like more need a more of a composite shot for whatever it is like a flat shot you know some things need that you don't need it every time but if I think you're trying to portray it then I'll you know I'll add it in as something that you know should probably take a look at um and then I think, you know, this could also work too. Um, as this. I was gonna, I was gonna, you know, sure. Um, I was going to shorthand this, but I think it's better if I actually just do it fully. Make sure those lines fan out and don't just, they actually do feel like they're going to a, a space that it can screw you over. Like it's doing to me right now. Um, So then I think you could also do from something like this. Like imagine getting a decent close up of his face kind of coming up. Shoulders up. Let's let's push the exaggeration now. Hands a little forward. It's praying. So the reason why I like this angle here is because we're with the character looking at the heavens, right? And I made him a little bit big, um, but let's say his hands are together. And right here. His fingers are crossed. And he's just desperately praying. Air flowing. The lock that he has are flowing in the wind. That's here. Make sure them ears are down. That's, that's they're gonna be on that angle. And so now we're here, the camera's looking up at the heavens. He's praying. Get our golden lady. She's coming out from here. I'm just gonna get that kind of started. And now we're gonna add some depth by like overlapping, you know, her. And we're gonna get a top angle of her. She can be like this, looking down on him. All right, I need to do this a little bit better because it's just gonna be, it really it will slap different if we get this right. And then her arm, is dragging in the air. 
right? And then she has the one hand here. Now, if I'm doing her rib cage like this, her breasts are gonna sit up here. I did not do those breasts right, but it is what it is. And then, say her waist is right here. Also, did not do the waist correctly either. It is what it is, gonna have to just eat that. And there's this drop of color above this. So, now we're getting, my opinion, you know I'm saying we're getting some decent depth here and we're getting a great narrative kind of connect, you know what I mean? And I'm gonna do, I'm gonna hop back into red here and drop and, and do this little, the, the little thing here too. I may have to work through this, the, the little, crisp, the, the symbol that's over his head or whatever, but you know, I kind of, let's put this on top again. She has longer hair, but it's curly. And hair curls across here. Look at that. We got some drag, decent motion. Draw, draw one across her face. And I think, but I don't know the tone, the tonality of the scene. So if there's fear and there's desperation, like we're in the space, fear and desperation with him looking up. Um, you know what I'm saying? It doesn't necessarily feel that way, but when you have the eyebrows kind of turned in like that, there's, you know, there's some, excuse me, going to a little bit of a sadder tone. There's some, not desperate, there's something there that seems like a wanting. Um, and we get that here. This is a little bit more afraid because the shoulders are up. But if I drop the shoulders down and, you know, whatever, he would probably seem a lot more calm. And then let me, uh, let me drop this shit into a hole. Let's see. Oh yeah, so this is the drawing over your thing. If you just read it over this, I think those little elements would help, would be a game changer. Um, or you can go at an angle like this or like this, but can you see like they have different tonality, you know, it's a different emotional approach to these, both of them. Um, it's actually not a scene per se. It's an album cover, but yeah, keep going. Oh, I see. Okay. So then that's really good to know that context. The person probably doesn't want to be seen and desperate like this. So, you know, instead we uh duplicate now i normally say uh if it wasn't late i would just be like you'll redraw it because if you can't draw it one time then you can't draw it um but because it's late i'm i'm, I'm not going to use that philosophy and drop the shoulders down so he's a little bit more relaxed again Um, arms going a little bit forward. Arm meets here. Prayer. Flat inside, and then just have the muscle be compressed on the outside. And I would say he's looking up, but I've I've pulled his gaze down a little bit. And I won't, I wouldn't go, I'm, I probably won't go too strong. Unless it's meant to be something that's desperate. I wouldn't go too strong. And now this, still a different feeling than this. Now I'm not saying either of those are better or whatever, right? It's just different approaches to stuff. I think continuity volume wise is a thing that we always get caught up on. Easiest way for us to like really rectify it, especially for me, is the C's. So just making sure I got the C's, you know, my C's covered essentially, uh, where I go through and I wrap every piece of it so I get the right tunnel that's kind of going. Um, 
And if you're having issues with that and you want to practice that whole wrapping and tunnel situation, uh, just do this. Take a, a square and then just start to turn it into space. Like take that same square, have a starting spot. It's not, it's actually not a square. It's a, a, a cylinder. And then just start to turn that cylinder in space. Now the thing with the lines, if you do the lines, so let's say I turn the cylinder in space, it's probably gonna be like this. Actually it's gonna get smaller as it gets away from us. And technically, let's say it's, it's all gonna go from the same angle. So it'll go like this, whatever. Uh, one, two, three, four. And then just make sure you have those same lines kind of indicated. What that's going to do, I'm going to do this, and I do this, and I do this to match it. It's probably going to be one, two, three, four. And actually, come on, come on. This one's going to have a big one, then it's going to be like this. Then like this, you know what I'm saying? Because the further away it goes, the tighter those ones are gonna get. Because it's going away further in space. So yeah, just practice that as a technique until it until you got like this, and you're like, all right, that's turned the furthest. And then when you're thinking about your arms and stuff from now on, you're like, all right, well, boom, that's the furthest away, and then that's this. And that's gonna really help you really articulate. You know, something, an arm or a leg. Say other part of the body's there. did that but constantly try to wrap forward and back and I think it'll make a difference in the volume of the artwork and stuff like that um all right guys uh oh, you were having fun I was and I tend to have too much fun in those moments um but yeah was that helpful oh yeah uh but I hear you thank you so it seemed like it was helpful uh do you feel like those points were valid um you know, because you could always be like, ah, oh, nigga, I don't, I don't agree. Um, and I'm perfectly fine with that. You know what I'm saying? John, notes taken. Good. And I'm, I'm, hope, I'm glad it was something that really added to it. Um, yeah. And again, uh, or maybe if I didn't say this already, yo, Vince Smoke, thank you um, for doing the Eyes of Darkness because you're not the only person who gets anything from that stuff. Um, I do too when I'm redrawing it's it, like I'm I'm also like restudying so it's actually really helping me develop as well but I'm sure other people who are also on the chat who are hearing what I'm talking about and those who are actually tuned in and drawing seeing what I'm drawing are actually getting stuff out of it too um, even if it's repetitive if we're talk talking about perspective and you know continuity these are things that we have to repeat to ourselves in our heads over and over and over again when we're drawing or else we will we will draw with excitement and forget about those things until it becomes second nature so i have a tiktok video that i'm going to drop that is basically going to be like three reasons why a beginner should always use perspective perspective grids um and you know once you've kind of have a good feeling for it you've mastered it then you only really need to use it when you're when you're having trouble with something yeah, I need more info on perspective. I didn't approach this piece with that in mind. That's why I wanted to give you insight. Yeah, I think every drawing doesn't need a perspective grid 
all the time, but it should always be approached unless otherwise that it lives in a 3D space. And anything that lives in a 3D space has a horizon line, has a perspective that you're going to be looking for because it's relative. I don't know if you've ever seen that movie Ender's Game where he's trying, he's basically explaining it, how it was funny, how like they're going up in one spot in space and the other dudes in it oriented differently, but relatively like they're seeing, you know, like he's sideways and he's upright. And they talk about like relative perspective and view. It's just a really quick scene, but <clears throat> every drawing you should approach like that because every plane of your drawing is determined by the perspective that it's in. So it doesn't have to be as dramatic as I'm like those perspectives that I pulled up. They're very dramatic. And you know that because the pers the the two um, the two points of the perspective are really close together. And even the third point of the perspective wasn't that much further down than it could be. So it made it a lot more extreme. If you want a less extreme, like wide angle kind of shot, just move your um, perspective points further off the, the plane and that'll feel a little bit less um, exaggerated. Um, but I'm doing the exaggerations because it's, I, I want you to really see where I'm coming from with it and then be able to pull back. So um, yeah, just keep that in mind for all your drawings and two things will happen. The drawings will feel more lifelike because they'll feel more three-dimensional because you because you're envisioning them in a 3d space you're inevitably going to draw them as such and then two your characters will have to they will have to have more volume so not only will they feel like they live in a real space they'll feel voluminous they'll feel you know just a lot thicker and more weighty because you'll be following your perspective lines back and forth through space. Inevitably, that's going to give a weight and a volume to your character. And in that way, it will also feel more real, um, you know, to, to the random lay person. Um, all right, guys, it's been almost two and a half hours and I like to cap it right around there. Uh, I think it was a pretty good stream. Had a good amount of people on. I uh, had a good amount of questions. Um, ready let's go thank you so much for uh coming in for the follow for adding to the chat um everybody who's been subbed while i have not been um dropping content every month or every uh week just thank you so much i, I appreciate it you know what i'm saying uh, it is really it is actually helpful um i'm only able to get my upgrade um be is basically because of you guys and the work that i'm able to make and, and show will get better because of that so thank you for the support um nostalgia thank you for allowing yourself to be critiqued on camera uh because that shit is not easy you know there's sometimes there's a lot of not just ego but everybody puts themselves into their art so it's hard to to see what you've done you know be critiqued and someone try to add on to it but I hope you guys know that it's all out of love and it's all out of like I have been where you are and I still am and I can't get the I can't get this type of stuff from my mentors and the people that I want to get it from. So, you know, if there's anything that I can do and in part whether it's drawing over and giving a better understanding like or closer to my understanding of it, then you know that's where it comes from. It comes from something that I really want from this industry. And I hope that you guys get something from it, too. Hey, that's no issue I know on this shit. As long as you know your true north, bro. That's all that matters. Um, sticking to your true north is what's important. Oh, man, this was a great stream. I learned how to reset my Wacom driver stuff. So I never have to restart my shit again. We got an Eyes of Darkness. I did some working out. Thanks to uh, Vin Smoke as well. So... It was a solid stream. It was great. Um, all right, guys. Uh, I think my cousin's on, and I really, I really want to rate him. I really want to rate him because I don't. We we would have had to reset our stream. We would have had to start everything over. I would have lost everybody. It would have been trash. So if you guys can stick around, while well, I raid my cousin. He's worth a watch for all the people who are there. 
um, hop over, tell them I sent you, tell them, you know, you changed the game again on stream, and uh, he's going to get a kick out of that. Um, yeah, yeah, you know, we were able to keep the stream going because of him, so, bet, and he's playing League 2, uh, the sl let the slander begin. <laughs> All right, y'all, I appreciate you spending time with me. Um, you know, it's one of those things you can't get back, so I hope I added something to, to what you guys were doing. Um, and I hope you guys enjoy this stream. It's always fun to come back. It's always fun to connect with you guys. Um, it's just, you know, it always feels good. Peace.